Welcome to Talking Property. Today I'm joined by Patrick Bright, a best-selling author of four real estate books. Patrick's a buyer's agent. He knows all the tricks and traps in the marketplace and he's going to help us out today. Pat, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Pat, last time we spoke, a lot of properties were selling off market. We had a big discussion about whether a buyer should go in and purchase the property off market or wait for it to come to market. And you gave us some great advice then. If I can bring up SQM Research's auction clearance yep. rates mm. for the first half of 2021, mm. as a real estate agent, what we've noticed is the amount of property selling prior to auction is nearly equal to those selling under the hammer. And this is a new trend in the marketplace, Pat. So as a home buyer, do you advise your clients to go in with a pre-auction bid or are they better off standing back and waiting for it to go under the hammer? Well, let's just unpack as to why that's probably happening because my experience and understanding is that the reason most people will sell before auction is because they're getting an offer that they and their agent didn't think they would get either at auction or, or at any time in the campaign. So they're seeing this number and they're going, ooh, and the agent's saying, I don't know, I think we're going to get that on at the auction day. Maybe we should take this. Why would the agent feel that way given how strong the market is at the moment? Yeah, because they're basically seeing what's going on. They're immersed in the market and they're just seeing this offer. They, they would probably be getting multiple offers early in the campaign is what I'm hearing and seeing. Uh, and so if they've got a standout offer, then maybe, you know, take the money and run. Because at the end of the day, you know, you're not necessarily going to get the best price at auction anyway, because you can only get the second highest price. So if you've got some buyer who's five or 10% above anybody else who's throwing offers, then you're not going to see that extra if you run it all the way. So that's often why they're taking it early. Or the seller has been looking around and they've committed to something or they want to commit to something, but they need to know the changeover number on their place. So that might be Maybe we'll bring the auction forward or maybe we'll take that offer because then that allows us to go and buy this. The vendor's looking for certainty. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel there's a risk that buyers could overpay by running in too hard prior to auction and they might be better off standing back and letting it run under the hammer? Oh, look, the majority of time uh, property sells before auction, the number is usually a, you know, a number that probably wouldn't have achieved at auction in my experience. My default position on any buying property, let it run to auction. As a buyer's agent, I'm happy to go to auction. It's a lotto outcome. An auction is a lotto outcome for the seller and for the buyer, right? And I think the odds are more stacked in my view in the buyer's favour because the seller's got one property to sell. They've got one chance to get it right. They need all the stars to align to get a great outcome on the auction day. So at the very least, on auction day, there's equal pressure on the vendor as there is the buyers, is what you're saying? In my view, I think there's more pressure on the seller. And we must remember that we're in extraordinary selling conditions at the moment, so it's never been better for vendors. Correct. Yeah, we're in, yeah, it's, it's boom market times. So I've been around long enough to see over, over 20 years, so I've seen half a dozen of these strong market rises, and they all, they're all slightly different, but they rhyme. And so there's a lot of rhyming going on here. This is not unprecedented or unusual. To me, it's very early 2000 market where we had those 15 to 20% gains in 2001, 2002. So if we go to SQM Research's slide here, we'll see in a given week, mm. there were 315 auctions that sold prior to the big day. And under the hammer sold that auction, there was 351. Mm. So it's nearly broken 50-50. Have you ever seen the property market in Sydney performing this way where as many sell prior to as selling under the hammer? No, no, no. Normally we might see, you know, 15, 20% creeps up to 30, but getting up around the, the 50% mark for actual sales, but also we've got to, we're not factoring in the past ins and the failed auctions. Advice for buyers here, you want to buy a property, it's scheduled for auction, the real estate agent rings up and says, you know what, we're not going to auction now, we've just received a strong bid, do you want to make a bid? What's the best advice to give that buyer? Well, if they tell you that we're, we're selling it, um, you've got to be determined the rules of the game. Are they fishing? Because the first thing I'm going to say, are you, you know, are you fishing for an offer? That's a great point, isn't it? Determine right. the rules of the game oh, yeah. that the agent is putting in place there yeah. and then because the agent's the one that's changed the game yeah. at that point. So tell me the new rules to the game. Yeah, so first thing I'm going to say is, okay, are we on the market at that offer? Are we on the market? Are we selling? Are you selling for this figure? And if I don't better it, it's being sold to that person? Or are you just seeing whether I'm still interested above this number? Or are you just fishing for an offer to leverage off other buyers 
to try and get to the figure that the vendor will sell at. Why would a real estate agent do that before the auction though, Pat? Why? Because they've got a strong offer and they want to see, they think it's strong and they want to see how far behind buy number two or buy number three is to know whether they push it to auction or because the seller said, should I take that? My default position is I want to be going to auction because I know that we'll either buy it with change in our back pocket or we're not the buyer. But if I've got a client that <laughs> says to me, this is an 11 out of 10, I have to have it, I don't want to take the risk of going to auction and I know their budget is going to be close to being maxed out at auction based on what this property offers, then yes, I am going to have a crack at buying it before auction for them. Let's cut across to underquoting, Pat. How do we avoid being underquoted in the marketplace as a buyer? You can't. It's going to happen. You can't avoid it. it, it, it it's, it's just a matter of how much you're going to be um, bait priced or underquoted, whatever you want to call it. So what's some of the protection mechanisms that we can put in place? You can assume you every... Do the agent's price guide, for example? No, I don't. I, yeah. I, I've ignored it for not long ago. I gave up believing yeah. that. So that's the first thing. You completely ignore whatever you're told by the real estate agent. I, I assume you rely on do, your own research. Exactly. You yeah. do your own independent research. Yeah. You know, it, there's not much point because some agents are, are underquote by 5%, some by... 10, some by 25, some by 45%. I mean, some of them just completely make it up on the run. If we can bring the auction bunny uh, slide up, most, most home buyers um, want to avoid being the auction bunny. I think buyers can, have, can handle being out bit above the reserve price. Yep. It's when they max out um, below the vendor's reserve price, but over the agent's price, as per our definition there of an auction bunny, yep. that's the one that seems to really disturb uh, home buyers, what can be put in place to, you know, from an industry perspective to avoid this happening to good people every Saturday? Okay, so we can fix underquoting and fix people being misled easily. It's simple. It's called publish the reserve. If you publish the reserve seven days out, this is an idea I floated over a decade ago. I've written to, you know, housing ministers, state premiers, Federal, I've put that idea out there. I've got some occasionally some letters of reply acknowledging my idea and they'll just take it from here. But they've not implemented it. It's one thing they could do that would fix it. They've so tinkered around at the edges. Adopted? It, oh, why does any good idea not get adopted? Self-interest lobby groups. There's self-interested groups out there with lobbyists that are preventing good ideas getting up in every industry across the board all the time. In your experience as a buyer's agent in 2021, what percentage gap is there between the price the agent's quoting at the first open inspection and what it's been selling for? Depends on the agent. Depends on the area. Um, you know, and, and look, so there's no one size fits and, all. And I don't care if a property sells, uh, you know, well over reserve. I think it's good luck, maybe. That's market forces. It's market forces. What is frustrating is when you are above the guide and it's passed in. You haven't hit the reserve. So if they put a price guide... experience? Every other weekend. Tell it, us, tell us about one. Tell us about one. Well, oh, one just Redfern. recently. We had one in Redfern, and uh, the price guide was two point four million. They never changed the guide all the way through the campaign. Okay, come to auction day, where they're bidding above two point four. The bid was at, the bid was passed into us at two point six twenty five. So price guide 24 passes in for you 2625. Yeah, and the agent comes up to me and says, "We need a bit more to keep going, or we're going to have to pass it in." Right, so this is just before they passed in. I said, "Well, where's the reserve? Like, God, surely we're not, we can't, we were above the guide. Your guide was too far. We're well over it. Why aren't we on the market? Well, ten percent over it, yeah. Right? He sends around and says, "I got a reserve of three million. Right? It's just ridiculous that they do this. And then it comes on the market, on the internet the next week on the Monday. They change it with a price guide, a guide, a price, new price guide of two point eight. Yeah. Right. When the reserve's three million. Yeah. Yeah. So." This is the stuff that goes on. This is what frustrates people. And as I said before, you can fix this by publishing reserve. It would fix it. It fixes it for everybody and yeah. it's fair. People won't go to the auction. So you publish reserve seven days out. That's, that's my suggestion is let all the, no price guide is better than a phony price guide. Yeah. So let's just pull all price guides off, right? Drop it. Just put the property on the market three weeks out. You get all the buyer feedback. You talk to your vendor, you put the reserve, Auction, Saturday, 2 p.m., reserve is this. If they don't want to publish a reserve, pull it from auction, put it on the market with a price. Yeah. Change the campaign strategy at week three of a four-week campaign. This just fixes it, gets rid of all the wasted money. 
You, you, there's, there's regularly a dozen people with bidding cards at auctions. These people have all spent money on legals, pest and building reports, time and energy to be there. I was driving by is mad, and I guess... It has... Uh, Always agents, has. agents have always hidden behind the market, and when a market rises 15% in six months, there's plenty of uh, yeah. Pl plenty and look, of most sales agents I've spoken to individually about my idea are in support of it. They don't dislike it because there is there are sellers out there who do ambush agents with a reserve well above expectation and well above what they thought they were going to get and well above what they discussed the week before. So that happens to them, but that's not the majority of the time. The majority of the time, the agent knows exactly what the vendor's thinking because they're speaking with them every other day and they're having often a face-to-face -face or a Zoom meeting with them weekly and they've giving them all the feedback. So they, they kind of nine out of ten times know where that reserve's going to be. Yeah. So they are in partaking in this misleading of the market. Yeah, well, we saw an example ourselves recently where a townhouse in a development uh, has a price guide of 1.9 and sells for 2.36. Hmm. In fairness to all concerned, 2.36 wildly exceeded all expectations. I can live with that. Yeah. The townhouse next door goes on the market with the same agent the next week with a price guide of 1.9. Now, that is clearly a case of underquoting, yeah. and lo and behold, there the property go. sells for 2.41. Gee, what a surprise. What a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that sort of behaviour that, that that's, alienates home buyers and that's causes what mistrust. That's mistrust. what frustrates people and yeah. it wastes people's time and money. Uh, quickly, before we finish up, Pat, um, the pandemic has uh, obviously closed borders, state and international, um, and lots of buyers suddenly uh, find themselves buying property in Sydney or Melbourne uh, remotely, whether that's from another state mm -hmm. or, or internationally. Um, buyers, agents walking around uh, homes at the moment FaceTiming uh, someone in a remote location is fairly mm. common. Yep. Um, what do's and don'ts uh, for home buyers do you have in place for those that are buying remotely? Well, you do need someone on the ground. I think you'd be, you know, and it's an obvious, it might sound obvious for me to say that, but if you don't want to engage the services of a buyer's agent, then, you know, certainly engage somebody you know or trust to do some of that for you because the photos do not a good, ref they are not a good reflection. On the internet, I often a true reflection. No, you mean. Yeah. true reflection. So you must get someone independent to look over the property on your behalf. Definitely, don't rely exclusively very on, on, on the agent's marketing. Yeah, yeah. Any other good tips there for people buying remotely, Pat? Be organised. So things move. When they move, they move fast. And with yes. these numbers that we've talked about, with selling before auction, quite strong. It's it's often they'll go same day or next day. So what happens when a property is suddenly going to be sold that might be going for auction in three weeks' time and it's sold week two or week three, it's, um, it's usually like, we've got this offer, if you want to better it, immediately and they're expecting a contract. So you need to be organised quickly so you can partake in that. Otherwise, you're just going to get miss out. So you need someone on the ground that can move fast, someone that can sign a contract for you if you can't, those sorts of things. Be decisive. Yeah, you, but you need to have your building report done, your contract reviewed. So you be like, if it's going to auction, be prepared, you know, maybe week two as if it was the auction was tomorrow. What percentage of vendors in the marketplace now are having the due diligence done in advance for the benefit of the purchaser? So the turnaround time on the pest and building report, on the strata report, et cetera, et cetera, is fairly minimal. Yeah, they are increasing in number. So we're seeing more and more of the people providing the, the strata. It's really the agent, I think, in most cases, organising the building report or the strata the report. The vendor's agent? Yes. It's normally the vendor's agent doing that now uh, because there are companies out there that now that have adjusted their model uh, where they're charging a nominal fee, say $50, $100 for the report, and if you're the successful buyer, you pay the other five or $600. So, And then those companies are doing that where they might sell that report several times at the nominal figure. So they, but it's helping people be organised. Yeah. So this uh, due diligence prepared in advance has that made the market more dynamic overall, where days on market comes down because essentially there's no reason to delay. Um, all of the information's there at the ready, and you want to buy the property or you don't. Yeah, it is helping to speed things up a little bit. And look, yeah. it's a, it's a good move, I think. Um, what I'd like to see is a standard, a Why consistent is it a good standard. Move? Well, it's a good move because instead of nine people going and spending $600 on a building report, you have one person spending $600 and maybe the other eight have only spent $100. So how we could adjust that further, you make the build, a building and pest report and, uh, or a strata report a prescribed document, which means it's like uh, a 149 certificate. A seller's pack. 
it's part of a contract. It's attached to the contract. It forms part of the contract that the seller pays for. And that way, if you put a property on the market, you're required to produce this. Then it only needs to be produced once. And there could, should be a standard that it's produced to. So every single building report, they're checking the same things. Every strata report, they're checking the same things. Because different building reports and different strata companies, there's no regulation in that. It's an interpretation. You're paying a company to go and do an interpretation and no two building reports really are alike. So there should be a standard that they go to and it becomes a prescribed document and that will save tens of thousands, if hundreds of thousands of dollars every weekend because if you've got a thousand properties going up for auction and you've got five people bidding at each, which we know it's significantly more, let's say five people are bidding, the other four have bought a report that they didn't need to buy. Well, that's the pain in the market, isn't it? We can see why buyers get so aggrieved at underquoting when they bid at three or four auctions that they're not going to, uh, going to win and they've spent all of that money. Correct. Yeah. Pat, excellent information today. Thanks for joining us as always. Pleasure, Peter. And thank you for joining us today on Talking Property. We look forward to speaking to you next time.